Blender looks great the way it is, but what I like to do is always customize, customize, customize. Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender. Once again, taking a look at how to do a bit of customization to, uh, to what Blender looks like defaultly. Um, and Blender does look really good. It looks, uh, it looks pretty modern, pretty sleek uh, for the most part. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, and actually make this look even cooler than than it already does, which is which is you know already pretty cool. So I'm gonna go up here to uh, what's that file user preferences, and I'm gonna grab the uh, the um, the theme section here. And in the theme section, this is where we're gonna be doing most of our stuff. Um, the thing I always like to do is I always like to take the shading off of everything. So if we look very closely, you can see in these buttons they kind of have a bit a bit of a gradient. So if I if I do that, I can actually take the shading on and off these buttons, which looks really cool. I love the flat kind of graphic, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and undo that shading on all of these options here. I just really love the the flatness that it brings. Looks much more uh, looks much more clean. And also, I also like to uh, change the colors of the X, Y, and Z axis. I like to remain them. Uh, keep it keep the same kind of theme of the color here, but I like to change them. You can see down there it's changing the X location, the X uh, location uh, color. And I like to keep that like a, a reddish. I just like to to tint the color a little bit, just to make it not so uh, not so harsh. Something uh, something really simple like that, just um, making them look a bit a bit nicer. Something like that maybe. Um, so that's that's usually what I like to do the most, and uh, what we can do in uh, in everything with everything else, we can actually change the color of these these buttons. So like you know, when you have these clicked, they're uh, when you have these highlighted, they're blue. We can actually change this to a different color, like a, a yellow or something like that. I, I do like the way yellow looks, but we can go with like we can go with any color. I think I'm just gonna change it to a different type of blue, maybe more maybe more vibrant, something like uh, something like that, maybe. Yeah, something like that. And uh, the way we can uh, do this is you can see that we have a bunch of different blue colors down here. So we need to change all of those or else we, they're not going to match uh, in different places. If we click and drag this blue color we have, we can actually uh, scroll on down while we hold that, uh, that mouse button down. And we can just plop that right onto all of our different other colors to 100% uh, to match those to all the other colors that we need. Um, so that's that. Like I said, it's uh, really, really simple, really, really quick and easy to do. If you want, you can actually choose a different preset over here. Um, and, and some of these look really, really cool, uh, but I do like to just go ahead and I like to do a little bit of customization uh, myself. You can go here over to the, uh, the left-hand side over here and change all these different, uh, all these different settings as well. They, they do correspond with things down in the timeline, like so if I go ahead and I change uh, this color right here. If I, if I go ahead and change this keyframe color, you see down at the bottom for the current frame, you should see that that color changes right there, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna, I might change that to like a more bright green or something like that, maybe something like uh, like that. And if I add in a keyframe here, let's just add in a keyframe of location right there. You'll be able to see that when I change the keyframe color, that it changes the color, which is really really sweet. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, so uh, I really like the way that looks a bit better. Like I, I like to soften the colors, pretty much is what I'm what I'm trying to get at here. You can do this with every single different uh, option over here: the graph editor, the dope sheet, the NLA editor, uh, the image editor, the video sequence editor, text editor, and finally the node editor. I do like to change the noodle curving all the way to zero. I think I mentioned that in the video before, but uh, but yeah, I like to do that. I have a video about that specifically. Um, so when we do that in the node editor. The nodes no longer are all curly and stuff because I really don't like the way that looks. So now they're straight instead of being all curly, which is pretty cool. I like the way that looks. Um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, there's so many different things that you can do here. So I'm going to hit save user settings right there. Um, and if you want to, like I said, you can do totally do the presets there. But uh, but I'm going to stick with what we have uh, right here so far. So. And really quickly here, something also that's really, really cool is uh, once you're done with all your customization, you can actually go ahead and hit this plus button right here and you can add this to the theme preset so you don't have to go ahead and, and mess around with it. So again, so I can call this uh, Kai preset, you know what I mean? Kai blue preset, you know, and I can have a bunch of different ones and I can go ahead and uh, hit OK on that. And you can see right there we have the actual uh, Kai blue preset right there. So I can go and I can change to the hexagon theme. I can go ahead and change to the graph to the well, this one. This one looks really nice. I like that one. Um, we can go to back to black blender 24K. You know, we can go to all these different ones and then we can go straight on back to the Kai blue presets instead of having to go and hit reset, reset default theme and then go and change it all again. So I thought that was really neat and, uh, and really easy to uh, to do.
You can also go ahead and change the uh, the way things work. Like when you open up Blender, do you want it to have auto automatic keyframing on? You can do that. Um, you can go over to input and you can change uh, all of the different you know hot keys and everything else within every single one of the different editors, which is really sweet. Um, for if you use the the grease pencil a lot, um, which I might have a video coming soon about, by the way. Um, you can go ahead and I like to I like to change some of the uh, the the hotkeys for the um, for the uh, for the grease pencil. I won't do that in today's video, but uh, but like I said, I mean, there's so many different things you could do here, which is really sweet. Like you can change the the way you draw. You can even add a, a the, you can make the draw button a, a a keyboard button instead of a mouse button. It's really really sweet. All the things you can do. You can change the speed of stuff, the, the everything. It's it's really really great. So. I just wanted to uh, to kind of do that because I've seen a lot of people they've they've been asking them, how how did you have that uh, the 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 different colors in Blender or this or that and I just uh, I really wanted to go over that so that is pretty much it that's all the things I like to do go ahead and change the colors and and everything like that like I said you can change all the, the different gray colors here as well too and you see it changes stuff down there and each one of them corresponds to something else that's different um, so let me put that back um, each one of them corresponds to something different so uh, it's really nice to go ahead and play around with. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys go out and customize your blender exactly how you like it. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. But until then, bye.